Welcome to Salvage Motorsports. What are we working on here today? Well, today I'm going to show you how to fix your automatic transmission for good by taking it out and throwing it directly in the trash <laughs> because they have so many issues. You might as well swap it to a five-speed manual and just get it over with already. So we're going to show you how to do that. On this 1997 Mitsubishi 3000 GT SL. Let's get to it. Goodbye automatic transmission. It's been real. So we got a uh, 3000 GT SL. What kind of motor does this thing have? Single overhead cam. We got single overhead. Automatic. Auto. And it's an auto, but you guys are converting it to a five speed? Yeah. That's cool. This will be enjoyable. Yeah, pretty nice interior, actually. Black leather. Yeah, it looks good. Usually the bolt ring's really worn down. This one's actually in really good shape. Yeah, it's not bad. I do like the color combo too. It's got gold with a silver lip. And on, on the red, Caracas red. Hallelujah, we got the wheel. Nice. All right, let's gonna get started on getting that transmission off. Just more than that. Oh yeah, you gotta get it started. No, we gotta start it. How'd it run? Sounding okay? Yeah. Okay. So These sound? engines are pretty bulletproof. They're, they're the ones you can do the most thrashing to and they'll just... Forgiving? That's cool. Alright. Non-interference. All right, so we got the single overhead. This has a distributor. Yeah. That's wild. How wild is it? I don't know, medium. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. We don't. Radiator can stay in. We're just draining the uh, transmission cool. lines. Yeah. It's got a transmission cooler that's hooked up to the radiator. So oh, okay. We won't be needing that anymore because manuals don't use it. Oh, all right, that's cool. So I'm gonna drain that, and so on, and so on, and so on. So is the five-speed, is, is it just the same as like the Stealth RT transmission? Yeah. The five-speed manual? Mm -hmm. Yeah, same thing. Can you use a 91 to 93, or does it have to be a 94 and up? Uh, I'm pretty sure the early model 91s had different axles, different splines on the axles. Okay, so newer than that? What, that I'm using or? It can use a dual overhead, um, five speed? Yeah, all the five speeds are the same besides like early model 91s just had a different spline on the uh, CV axles for the transmission, I believe. Because when people swap into 91 transmissions, they have a real hard time finding the axles. I thought you were going to go back in the drawer. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Just remembering what I need. Trying to remember what I need. Well, we started without you. Clearly take out the easy stuff. Intake. Windshield wiper uh, reservoir battery. I mean, that should be, that should be pretty... Uh, Just a couple bolts. Yeah. Tw four 12s in here. One, two, three, four. 10 mil right there off the intake. This guy had an aftermarket, well, I had an aftermarket k and on there, unscrewed it, two bolts right in here? the bottom. Yeah, it's this one right here. Screw right there. 
that wasn't even tight, so I just wiggled those loose. But okay. you should know how to do battery terminals if you're going to attempt to put a five-speed transmission <laughs> in your automatic car. <laughs> you should be able to take, okay. If you can't take off you your battery terminals, don't even attempt Before it. you start, if you can't remove the battery, you should get someone who knows close, how. Close the hood and step away, please. That was a good sound bite. There it is. These are, these are good sounds in the background that you just put any time throughout the video. <laughs> every five minutes, you should run it by and then just pull the audio and then just run it every five minutes. I'm not doing that. Why? <laughs> it's good sound clips. All right, so you're gonna wanna clear out this side of the... Anyways, back to if you can't pull your battery, you close the hood and you walk away. No, you get a friend to help that knows uh, how to do it. But usually the friend knows less about the car than you do is usually how that goes. Well, I've, you, see, I've seen that. So you gotta find the other friend, the other way. Pay someone to do it. Someone that knows what they're doing. There's guys out there. But please, God, make sure they know what they're doing. Um, they at least gotta own one of these cars. If they don't own one, then they really don't know about it. And they have to work on it themselves. Yeah. So this is something I don't, I've never seen on a... What is on that? a 3000. Oh, that's a, what's a, bl a block, w block warmer or whatever? I believe so, but I've never seen one on a car, on a 3000. That's strange. They usually don't have those. Maybe they had an issue with like freeze plugs coming out in the winter time and <laughs> who knows? Huh, yeah, who knows? Oh no. Hey, good job. I caught it with my foot though. Undo the motor mount, clearly. What was that, a 17? 19? 17. What, is, what does someone expect to pay for, uh, for a manual trans like that? What do you mean? On average, like if you had a- To buy a manual trans or yeah. to have the whole job done? Oh, just to buy the trans. Ah, uh, they range, you know. You could buy it off Joe Schmo out of his garage that don't need it anymore for maybe 500 bucks or maybe you buy it from a business uh, for like a thousand or fifteen hundred. It all, it all ranges, you know. Okay. It's mileage, condition, if you trust the guy, you know, is a bunch of variables. You know, so, maybe the guy's gonna sell you one that's grinding every gear. All right, so you're looking at eight hundred to a thousand bucks probably for, for a trans to swap into this thing. And then uh, there's a bit more work inside because you gotta cut through the firewall, right? Yep. So we'll take you on a journey through step by step. How just to a, do this? Just to mount the pedals. Perce proceed at your own risk. Yeah. I'm not a mechanic. This is not, not a I play one on YouTube. <laughs> it's not a. This house. is not financial advice. I'm gonna take the wheel off to get these four bolts that hold in the mount. I don't like it at all. I don't like it. It's not my favorite locking lug. You see these four rubber caps in here? Gotta pop these out. 14 mils. 14 mils. Four of them. Four of them. The extended one. This see? car's got coilovers on it, so it makes this a little easier. Car don't got coilovers on it. Your strut's gonna be a little bit in your way, but you know, get a nice extension, you'll get around it. If that motor mount wasn't stuck, you pull that out. Yeah, for sure. I'm gonna get a pry bar and give it a give it a little pry. That is stupid. <laughs> dumb shit in the way, right? Excuse me, language. Look what he did. He threw all that hamburger all over the floor. Okay, back to business. One ten mil on your motor mount to hold the harness. Still a little pinched. One motor mount. It's a very satisfying sound when it hits the ground and the steel hits the floor. Let the steel hit the floor. Let the steel hit the floor. 
ground here. There might be a ground here on your transmission, 12 mil. Zip it right out. Pull it out of the way. I already took some of the clips apart here, here. There's, I mean, you'll see them. One on the speedo sensor. There's a couple for the trans. This one's for your starter signal wire. Show the one for the starter again. This one's the starter one right here I took off. It went right here. And this one was one for the transmission I took off right here. Then the uh, speedo bones back here that I took off. Okay. There's still a couple more like this one here. Another one for the transmission. Another one for the transmission right here. Ah, there it goes. Borrowing Austin's awesome boss stop light bar. Look at this thing. It's in a, this is a, a miracle. This is a work of art right here. It's from Snap-on. So I think this thing's like 350 or $400 or something. It's like a wild price, but man, it's like the best one I've seen ever so far. This thing just illuminates everything. It's really r like rugged and robust. And look how it lights up the engine bay. Holy moly. Holy moly. So if you've got uh, around $350 or so, burning a hole in your pocket, that's... that's and a snap-on guy that comes by your shop, maybe. Yeah. Then, uh... Because, uh... You can order. I don't know how else you would get one. Maybe order and right off a snap-on site, maybe, if you can. Yeah, you might find me order it. I'm not sure. A couple more harnesses in here. Yeah. If we can kind of get to it. I am. But it's clipped on. Which one? That's under the coolant line? The coolant hose? Like the lower coolant hose? Come on. There it goes. There's another one right here. You got two of them. They're covered in crud. Makes it nice and slippery. There it goes. Automatic fuse uh, radiator. Transfer to the bottom of the passenger side of the, of the radiator. Should be a 10 mil, anyways, unless someone's off their clamps. Oh, everything really wants to fight me on this car, huh? What's the mileage on this thing? More than you can afford, pal. Mitsubishi. Somebody said self-tapper, straight in the bottom. All the 14s on the bottom of the subframe. That's the last one. I'll have to catch it. You want to catch it? No. Oh, nice safety glasses. Thanks. O2 sensor harness was just on it. Dang. Right there is the other 10 mil. For the trans cooler line. Maybe we could get a uh, snap on deal brand. Oh, like a YouTube. Uh, Nobody uses Snap On like tools. Like a sponsorship? Yeah. Oh, you, do you know any uh, YouTubers that use Snap On? Are you using Snap On? Yeah. Show me. Yeah, Snap On. Uh, Look at that. Snap On. Snap On. Snap On. Snap On. So reach out if you want 100 views, you know, every video. <laughs> get, get your name out there, Snap On. You know, you know you're struggling. You need our. Need our advertisements. So let's reach out and give me some free tools. And Should I do a quick overdub? Real men mm. use real tools. Snap on. Got some uh, liquids coming out. It's trans fluid. Oh, that trans fluid lines. 
Just a little bit left. Oh, yeah, I drained the whole trans. That's just always in there. Okay. Could be low. Who knows? Maybe that's why his Maybe that's why the trans went out. I guess we'll see, right? I'm doing the starter harness. All right, you get the idea. What? Can the bolts out of the starter? Yeah. Two 14 mils for the starter. Two 14 mils for the starter. One on top, one on the bottom. I don't know if you got the bolt over there that was on for the starter harness. That kind of. A, that was a 12 mil. Okay. Any luck with those uh, bolts? Yeah, lots of luck. Lots mm. of skill, not luck. A ratchet, I'm sorry, the uh, coke. The coke in. It's like a tiny one. Yeah, getting the bracket out of the way. It's two 17s up top, two 14s on the bottom here. And you should be able to wiggle the bracket out of the way. If we're lucky, which I'm gonna have to take the whole downpipe out of the way. If I can like it. Yeah, let's take the whole downpipe out of the way. Let's... Starter. Bracket three. I lied. I just wiggled it out. Camera guy's real excited to power off the camera. Taking out the plastic cover from the trans, 212 mils. There's supposed to be little clips in there. They were non-existent on this car. One plastic cover down. One to go? No. I don't oh. want to keep that. Just leave that one? Yeah, I'm going to drain the trans though so it don't leak everywhere. Is this the drain plug? Yep. Yeah. It's like probably a 17. Moment of truth. You ready for the gabagoo? Yeah. yeah. Alright, just grab these two bolts underneath from trans just so we don't have to keep going up and down to that. Yeah. Somebody's had this trans off before. Yeah? All these bolts are really loose. Someone's working on it before. I can put it back together though. Best way. This one goes to the motor mount. It's not fun to get. I wonder if they even put it back in. They did. They did? Yeah, they did. Some guys won't because they're hacks. Just a hard one to get to. Yeah, because you got your AC compressor. I'm gonna take out this. I'm gonna take out cotter pin. Nice. There's supposed to be a washer. Oh back yeah, behind there. it. Just stuck to the thing. Where it's at, I don't know. Somebody I say whoever worked on this car last. Forgot a few things. It's not it's not terrible. A A for effort, I guess, in their book. Take another wheel off. You like these wheels? I do. I'd like them in one size bigger, but they're fine. And they, I think they complement the car well. Same thing, just like the other side. Ooh, look at how rusty that one is. 32 millimeter. We're gonna have to get the big impact gun out for that one. A good dog. Uh, wow. For as rusty as it looked, that was pretty easy. Also, no, no washer. No locking washer on this side either. This is a locking washer that goes back there. Big locking washer. Safety not needed. Pulling off the brake line. Yeah, give it some, some slack so that I could pull the CV axles out. Two, there's a 12 on this side, on the back side, just like that. And another one on the other side. Undo both of them. Two 17s. For your strut to hub, drop it down, push your CV axle through, pop it out. The 
That's what I'm going to need an extension for. Popped it right off. He man. Rodney's a He man. You make a live action He man, you're gonna go apply? You just talk to hear your own voice, I'm guessing? Psh, update. What's next? Two bolts in the back of the block for the carrier bearing that holds the CV axle. I believe they are 14s and the axle will come out. And all I gotta do is the bolts to the block for the transmission. The transmission should fall right off. And then we can throw it right in the garbage where all the automatics belong. Cause they're nothing but trash. Really? Yeah. Do you got any they're awful. Do you got any extra ones sitting around? No, cause they're all bad. Every automatic transmission you see here, like that one there, bad. And I keep it, why? I don't know. For parts, I guess. I should probably just scrap them all. <laughs> okay. Two bolts. These are probably the worst bolts on the whole job. They're so annoying because they're in the worst place. And then when you got someone who like put this together last and cross threaded them, it just makes it so bad. CV axle. Number one. Yeah. It's not moved. Yeah, it moved. Two CPS. Nice. I'm gonna replace them anyways. Oh. Those don't get used again. Those are auto axles. Now we drop the trans. Oh, the next left is a couple bolts. From the bell housing here, I'll take out and I will shake it. Probably gonna take maybe a couple of these off. Probably gonna dismantle the shift selector and get the bracket out of the way for the motor mount to make it a little easy to slide off and not hit the frame rail when I drop it. Three 17 mil bolts for the motor mount bracket. Take it out of your way. 14 to undo the neutral safety switch. The selector, get this out of the way. A couple tens on the neutral safety switch. You guys probably don't have to take this off, but the less in my way, the better. There we go. And now the 17's around the block for the trans. See if, we get, see if we can get them with this gun. It's that one. It's that one. I don't think I'll be able to get this one. Maybe. Got it. There we go. Trans is all loose. I can wiggle it off. Looks like this is one of those used transes from a junkyard. Already garbage. Oh, the wind's really blowing in the shop. It's good. Try to take the torque cor converter bolts out. Are they underneath? Well, I'm gonna go up with it. That way, when I drop the torque converter, the trains don't drop on top of me and kill me. You know, safety. It's a big deal. Try to take the inspection shield off. Two 10 millimeter bolts. Inspection shield? Yeah. Okay. That way I can get to the torque converter bolts. And grab a extension.
Voila. Now you have four torque converter bolts that look like that. The pink ones? Yeah, well, someone put a marker on them to make sure that they got every single one of them probably when they installed this 17 mil. You're gonna want a good 17 mil because if you don't got a good 17 mil to put on there, just gonna strip them because these strip easy. So, yeah, you want a six point, not a 12, but you will just strip them. Do you need me to hold that? Yeah, you wanna hold that camera guy? That way I can bump this as you hold the crank so it don't move. Got it? Yeah. There you go. There's one. There's two. Right there. It's all right? Yeah. Got it. Just look at how flat those heads are. And strip out real easy. Seems like less surface area too. Yeah, I mean, look at the tight spot that they're in. They gotta have a thin head like that. Only four? Yeah, should be it. Four of those. Now we go back down and drop the trans. Success. One garbage trans. One small leap for mankind. Flex plate bolts. Yeah, 14 mil, we don't need them anymore because we're gonna put a flywheel on it for the clutch. Yeah, that pan's leaking or the rear main seal's leaking. We'd have to plug it into another car to know how many miles is on it. Good news, Arts and Crafts has been extended by three hours. Yep, you know why? No. Gotta do the rear main seal on the pan. That's all. Oh no. Bonus content. Now we all get to learn how to do a rear main seal on the pan. Got that oil? Yeah. Yeah. If that gets into the clutch, the clutch will start slipping and the clutch will go bad. Then you'll have to replace the clutch. Then you'll be right back to taking it all apart. And doing that. And doing it all over again. Okay. So you might as well do it now and get it out of the way. So that's what I'm doing. I'm doing it now and getting it out of the way. Oh, all right, that sucks. It does suck. Because now I definitely got to take down that downpipe. My fingers hurt. Well, now your back's going to hurt because you just pulled landscaping duty. Hooray. Oh, bunga, dude. I have to get the torches out for those ones. Last resort? No, I could probably get this one. Those front two, I don't think I'm gonna be able to get. No, it's gonna snap. I don't wanna do that. Cause then I'll, oh, need, yeah. a, then I'll need a rear pre-cap. So I'm gonna go get the torches before we start breaking stuff.
on. Not in there? Oh. Was it in there? Yeah, it was in there. It's like, it's on fire almost. Was it in there? It's so hot. It's underneath the transmission in the oil. Perfect. Smoking. All right, last piece for today. Calling it a day. That's it for today. It's dark out. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Hasta luego. Working on the oil pan and rear main seal here. We're gonna take out all the bolts to the bottom of the oil pan, all the 10 mils that go all the way around it. And then we'll take out the 10 mils on the rear main seal, pop that up, put a new one on, and reseal the pan. You know, it'd be smart if I emptied the oil pan first. Actually. Gotta take off the oil pressure sender to get that last bolt back there. It's in the way. There you have it, the pan's all off. Now you're gonna to wanna to clean and prep that surface to be resealed. Gotta scrape off all that red RTV that's on there, all the way around the pan, and up there around the rear main seal. Then you gotta do the pan also. This is Mitsubishi Mitsuban liquid gasket. It's part number 1000A992. New uh, main seal going in. Got it replaced. That's good.
oil pan removed. That's gonna get cleaned and resealed. Make sure there's no leaks. Pam is cleaning out the uh, oil pan here. That's good. We surfaced. Clean it. Cleaning it out. Looks good. All right. This is the most fun part, is putting the RTV on nice and even. Do you feel like you're doing a good job? I only do good jobs. Yeah, it looks good. You look good. Thank you. So I'm gonna go around it with my finger anyways. Oh, and spread it out? Yep. Yeah, it looks good. So, how long does this stuff take to dry? This dries pretty fast. I put the pan up loose so, so it gets tacky, and then you give it a couple, I don't know, give it a couple hours and you can tighten it all the way. This is OEM Mitsubishi sealant, not just regular RTV. Sure Perfect. I don't know if there's a Mitsubishi part number on it, but we're not just using any off the shelf garbage. Yeah, that's gonna be awesome. Only OEM. I could put it on a little thicker there, cause that's where it really thins out. That's a guy to have great skills, hold on. Once your dipstick could go or also get pinched in between there and your thing. And oh yeah, you don't want to get the bottom dipstick end pinched. And then I pushed it down last time and you guys were like, uh, don't do that. <laughs> and now I know why. Yeah, because if it gets pinched, you have to retake off the pan and reseal it. It's doing the whole job twice. See, so check this out. Uh, new uh, main seal. All right, let's get the oil pan on and torque down these bolts. Pam, good job. It's nice and clean. All right, good job. Good job, buddy. Looks good. All sealed up, no more leaks over here. Just cleaning the surface off? Yeah, stuffing it up a bit. It looks, it looks good? Yeah, it looks good. All right, flywheel's going on. Are you sure? Are you sure about that? Are you sure about that? Are you sure about that? I had to find some flywheel bolts. And these are 3000 GT ones. We just had to find some around the shop because... Are they all the same? They're not the same between automatic and manual. Right, because of that other plate that's there? Yeah, there's like an adapter plate. <laughs> Let's see. Oh yeah, that's because of the plate, huh? Beverage of choice today. What do we got? Fruit punch. Hello? The flywheel bolt torque specs are flywheel 54 foot pounds and the pressure plate is 13 foot pounds. This flywheel only lines up one way. Oh, all the bolts? Yeah. You gotta find like this, that sweet spot. Yeah. And I couldn't see it with it being so high up in the air. Oh, it looks like it, right? Yeah. Anyone else is wild? I, tell me. I don't know. <laughs> the West? No. <laughs> yeah. All right, looks good. What you got there for us? A very shit tool that they didn't they didn't trim up when it came out of the machine. What? Oh, it's supposed to just be. <laughs> it's supposed to be trimmed up out of the things. So What's not? It's too long. It's all right. 
There it is. You want to hand me that pressure plate? I don't want to walk away from this heavy drop. Thirteen pounds for the pressure plate. Yeah, let's see if this goes down that far. It does. Just in time. Just in time. Looking good. It's like a mic boom. You know how they hold over your head? Yeah. I'm, I'm sure. an expert. Trust me. Kind of a crap day today. No matter. Oh well. Is that heavy? Yeah. You need help with that? Haha. <laughs> How happy are you on a scale of one to 10 right now? Negative five. Move it, move it up, because the light's gonna get stuck. Huh? Move it up a little bit, the light's got stuck. You're dumb, dude. So do you wanna crush a light? <laughs> Let me throw it under the car. <laughs> I didn't think you would lower it so much. Are you demanding the power of Austin? No. I summon the Austin. Yeah, I just watch out for that too. You got it? Yeah. I think that's it. It yeah. is. Great success. Crazy. Well, not for the non-turbos. Try doing that with a six-speed GR4 transmission. Uh, I would never want to try that. <laughs> that sounds terrible. That's dangling 130 pounds above your head. Not fun. The Avengers have a Hulk. We have an Austin. All right, transmission's on. Got it in place. It's one of the bigger parts of the job, so everything lined up and looks good. Just gotta get it tied down and. What's next after this? Then you go on the inside? Yeah. Or do you gotta like button everything up over here? Uh, you could do either. You could, uh, the shifter cable's gotta be ran. Um, the five speed shifter assembly's gotta be put in. The automatic shifter assembly's gotta be taken out. The pedal's gotta be put in. Hole. Drill a hole in the firewall to mount them. Because clearly in an automatic there's no clutch pedal. Sounds fun. What are you looking for? This. The tiniest tool of all. Ooh. So we got the trans in, but now we gotta work on the inside of the car and put in the clutch master, which goes right in that corner there, which is gonna be awesome. We gotta drill the holes for it on the inside of the car where we're gonna start by pulling the brake pedal out there. You got one bolt there, four bolts around the booster, and there's gonna be a couple, I don't know if I'll be able to get it, but there is a couple up top there. If you can see them, I'm not sure what the camera's picking up, but there'll be one or two up there. Then you'll be able to pull the pedal out, and then you'll be able to mount the manual pedal and clutch pedal right there fun stuff fun stuff so we got the brake pedal out this is the automatic brake pedal there were two bolts up top that would be there and there and this is the manual brake pedal assembly with clutch that we're gonna put in I'll show you what it looks like with it out and how much room we got down there to drill the holes <sighs> Gives you a little bit more room in there. 
So we pulled the booster out of the way a bit to get some more room here, unbolting the master from the booster. And you see we bolted up the pedal so that way we could see where the holes are going to line up. Down here. See where they lined up. That way we can mark them and see where, let's see if I get a good shot of it. Right there, you'll see where it lines up and we mark it where the, where the clutch master is going to come through the wall. We marked it so we could start drawing out those holes. You see the room we got to work with. We're going to pull it back out and then drill it. So we got the hole drilled through. I don't know if you can see it through there for the clutch master. I'll show you from inside the car. Drill along with this. Then once we got the holes, holes drilled, we went ahead and used some files to clean it up a bit. And then it came out looking like that right there. There's a little bit of a extra hole right there because they had some wiring ran through there for the alarm system that they drilled a hole for. So it kind of messed up our hole and made it elongated. But what can you do? The clutch pedal assembly is going to cover most of that up anyway. So it's all good. Now to mount it all and put it all together. Clutch master. Brake booster. Okay. And that's the old brake. Yeah, now. This car's gonna be cool. What is it? You can almost sit in that angle in there and catch it going in. I can? Should be able to. Ready? Yeah. There it is. All right, engine's running, and then new transmission's in, and should be good. I love this light bar. This is an awesome light bar. I think I mentioned it in another video, but I just got to give it props again. Look at this one. It's a snap-on one. That's the light bar. Make the hole a little bit bigger. All right, we're getting it back together. Got the brake booster in. Got the clutch master in there. Got the aftermarket stainless steel clutch line that we yeah, got to get for the swap and we'll show you what it looks like in here we took the seat out to add some more room that way it was easier to lay down up in here and then this light looks like it's dying we use this light uh, yeah see how it's all bolting back up there using the same bolt holes as the automatic pedal along with the new holes we drilled for the clutch pedal there and the clutch master coming through the wall now yeah it's coming along didn't have to pull the dash or drop the steering column at all as that's all still up so not too bad got the bumper it's gonna go up here putting some gaskets on Hands is in, half shafts or CV axles are in.
much goes in there. Whole thing, uh, basically. Probably like two point eight quarts, just like uh, or two point three, just like the VR fours. How do you know your trains is full? It just pours out, eh? Oh, it's full. There you go. You know it's nice and full. Putting the shifter cables in. Yeah. There's no bracket here, though. Is there for the automatic one? Uh, no, but the TCU's right there. TCU's right there, so you pull the TCU clearly. This is a bracket for the manual cables you got to put in. Four bolts for the shifter assembly. Four bolts to take the other one out, the automatic. And you got 112 bolt on the firewall and then 112 nut. Because if you go for an automatic, it has a stud. But if you have a manual, it's two bolts. All right, so we got these two cables that come off of the automatic shifter assembly that you got to remove also. One goes to the brake pedal. That one's super easy to get to and disconnect. The other one runs up the steering column to this white part here with the spring in it you take that apart because if you don't sometimes you won't be able to get your key out of there you'll randomly run into that if you don't take that out yeah. should be it center console put back together there's two bolts in there two bolts right there this one's broken a little bit but then there's a bunch of bolts to hold this in there's one back there one back there one back here after you pop out the carpet of course the bolts are Behind there, you'll see them all to take them out and put them back in. I didn't film that, but you know, you'll find them all. That's uh, the easy part is taking out the center console and seeing all the bolts and wiring. But yeah, it's coming together. Got the shifter cables hooked up. Just gotta do some other small stuff. But you can see we're pretty much done with the swap. Put some brake fluid in the reservoir there. Gonna bleed the system. Gotta put the slave on there. Oh, slave's already on. Austin knocked a couple things out for me. Stainless steel line was ran. Put the motor mount back in. It's all coming together. Almost done. Putting the manual starter on because the automatic starter is different and won't work with the manual transmission. Come up over there, what are you working on? Just getting the harness on. Go for it. Hey! What? What? Alright, taking this off the lift today. New transmission went in. Uh, it's, it was an automatic, now it's a five speed. <laughs> All right, let's fire this bad boy up and get it out of here. Now it runs, now it purrs. Sounds good. All right, you ready to take this on its first test drive with a five-speed manual? Yeah, I'm ready. Let's do it! Look at this beautiful interior. Roads are very unforgiving. Yeah, these roads aren't so great around here. How's the shift then? Shift's great. It's got a new clutch. New throw -out bearing. Came with the clutch kit. New slave, new master. I'm, I'm not sure if you got the other day, if you were by, if you recorded where there's a neutral safety switch you gotta bypass. Uh, the reverse lights for the five speed that we had to repin. Adding in the sound effects of the blow off valve. Okay, go ahead. What am I, what am I going on? Oh, are you, oh, you can do it. You the sound <laughs> oh, okay, you got one of those ones? <laughs> Turbo XS, yeah. RFL. HKS. <laughs> 
super sequential. <laughs> Anyways, it seems like it's uh, shifting good. How's the clutch feel? It's responsive? It's good. Mission complete. All done. All done. Mission complete. Thanks for your hard work. Thanks for your work. Look at this. Little step bar. Fancy. And as always, like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Make it a 100.